Machine learning teaches us to see into the future. Enter linear regression, a tool exposing hidden relationships and unforeseen outcomes. From basics to insights, this episode demystifies machine learning and linear regression. You'll see here I'm using Python's Anaconda distribution within the Jupyter Notebook environment. I've developed a cheat sheet that if you follow along and copy the code exactly, you'll have a full working model for machine learning. You'll see we go through all the steps one by one, how to produce a final outcome and prediction that will be both fully comprehensive and equally as outstanding. Now let's begin. First of all, make sure to import the libraries. I've been through previously each of these, pandas, numpy, matplotlib and seaborn. Pandas being for dealing with data frames, numpy being for numerical Python, matplotlib being for visualizations and seaborn for more statistical plotting. What I haven't yet demonstrated on this channel, scikit-learn, also known as sklearn. These are the three you're going to want to import. We'll start with the train test split, which is a fundamental concept within machine learning. What this is, and we'll get into it later, is it splits your data into a set for training the model and then evaluating its performance on the test data. Why that's so crucial, we'll get into later. Next, the actual model we're going to want to use, and here it is linear regression. Then we'll import the models for evaluating the performance. Here we've used mean square error and mean absolute error. We'll cover more later, but for now, let's delve straight into it. So loading in ahead of a data set is something we're all familiar with. And if you're not, I recommend looking into it. Next, we'll explore the data. Now, why are we doing this? Looking at the shape, seeing the 244 rows and seven columns. The reason we're doing this, and as a side note, here I'm using the Seaboard built-in tips data set, but again, you can use this with any data set, your own or from Kaggle or otherwise. But the reason we're exploring this data is because we need to have a good and deep understanding of it before we get into the linear regression model. We want to determine what features we're going to use, but most importantly, we want to identify anything that might make our model less effective. Now I know from looking at this, there are no null values, but we can double check that here. There's none. But now we've explored the data a little bit and got a better understanding of it. Let's have a look for correlations. The first fundamental way to do this is with a pair plot. Seaborn or sns.pairplot and we'll pass in the data frame. Hit run. Now, depending on how many features you have within your data set, it can take quite a while. But let's look. What I'm looking for is something strongly positively correlated, going from the bottom left to the top right, suggesting as one variable increases, so does the other. I can see here that total bill is quite positively and strongly correlated with tip. But let's take another look at that by using a heat map. I'm going to pass in df core and brackets for the heat map. I'm going to put a not as true because that'll put the labels on it and I'll choose a C map as cool warm for my personal preference. If we look to tips and total bill you'll see it does have quite a high value compared to other things say size and tip. Now within machine learning there's a fundamental concept of x and y. These are being your features and your targets. x is we're going to put total bill and Y is tip. Y is what the output is, what we're trying to predict. And X are the independent variables that contribute to that prediction. And you could have multiple here. So in this case, we're exploring the influence of total bill on tip X on Y. You could use multiple features, total bill and size. Once we've determined what the X is and the Y, it's then important to divide your data into the training and test sets as we had explained previously. Now the way to do this again is a bit different to some of the things you may have seen before within Python. It's quite this lengthy string here and it's got a few parameters in here which we'll dive into but we can break this down to make it a lot easier to understand. You start with the x and the y. Now within x and y there are two subcategories the training set and the test set and the training set and the test set, you just separate all of these with commas. So x train, comma, x test, and so forth for y, 
is equal to the train test split. What we want to do for this is we want to pass in our variables which we assigned here, x and y. Importantly, here we're going to put our test size as 0.2. This means 20% of our data will be used for testing and the remaining 80% will be used for training. Generally, the more data points we have within a machine learning model, the better predictions it makes. And we want to dedicate the majority of our resources towards the training data. Whether you use 20% or 30% is up to you. And I recommend playing around with this and looking what other people have done. We also have random states here, random state equals 42. Let's explain that a bit further. So I've got a note here to reiterate that the reason for splitting the data is to ensure the model's performance is evaluated on unseen data. If you train and test a model on the same data set without splitting it up, meaning it sees all of the data, whereas here it only sees the training data before it gets tested. And I might perform brilliantly with this data, but not generalized to new data. So we need to test that. How well does it perform? So the code here uses the train test split, and this is provided by sklearn. The function takes in the input x features and y labels as its arguments, but it also takes the additional parameters to determine how to split the model. Test size, here we've done 0.2. Random state, this is a parameter used simply for ensuring reproducibility. Setting it to a specific value like 42 here, ensures the same split is obtained exactly each time the code is run. Moving on to step six. Now we're gonna actually create the model. We've gone through, we've loaded the data, had a quick exploration of it. We may have edited it and done some feature manipulation, but here we've assigned the values and now we can create the model. Our model is gonna be a linear regression model. Now, what you put here doesn't matter. You could put LR, and a lot of people do, or even LM. It doesn't particularly matter. But let's stick with model. Model is going to be linear regression. And then linear regression, or model dot fit, X train and Y train. This is fitting it to the X and Y training data from the split. Not the test data. Again, we just want it to use the training data. Now we have this linear regression model saved under the model variable, which is fit to the train test split, which is in itself assigned to the X and Y variables we chose previously. Now we have that model all set up. We're gonna use this trained model on the Y and X training data to make predictions on the test data. So Y predictions are gonna be the model predictions or the linear regression predictions from the X test. Let's hit run. And you've done it. There's a few ways to assess how effective your model is to evaluate its performance. Here, we'll create a scatter plot using matplotlib. We're going to plot the actual versus the predicted values to visually assess the performance. Now, this isn't so important. It's more for a visual inspection. To really get into it, we can create a data frame to compare its predicted and actual tip value. Let's run that and call head, so the top 10 values. An actual value of a tip was 3.18. It predicted 3.04. It's not bad. If we wanted to interpret the model a bit more mathematically, we can use coefficients and intercept. Specifically here, and I will include on screen a description of the intercept, but specifically we'll take a look at the coefficients. If we hit run, you'll see the coefficient is 0 0.10. But what does that mean? Well, coefficients indicate how much each feature, the x variable, influences the model's prediction. A positive coefficient, which is what we have here, suggests that as the feature increases, the target variable tends to increase as well, which is good, that's what we'd seen earlier. A negative would be the opposite. And then the magnitude, how high this number is, indicates the strength of the influence. Larger magnitudes imply a stronger influence. In fact, we can even go as far to say, interpreting this coefficient, that holding all features fixed, a one unit increase in the total bill, the x variable, is associated with an increase of approximately 
0.10 total dollars spent on tips, the Y output. And now you can see how crucial and powerful a tool is of linear regression within machine learning. It really creates one of the cornerstones and that's why we're starting here in this series. Now, you'll remember earlier, right at the very top, we imported these metrics here to evaluate the model. We've calculated the mean square error, as well as the mean absolute error, and here I've done the root mean error. We've done it by passing in the Y test and the Y predict, so it's on the output. It's evaluating the output's performance, comparing its test to its prediction. Let's look at what these numbers actually mean. You can take a look at these numbers and see how large they are, and base that on other models you've created before, and or online resources to see if they're considered relatively high. Finally, we can look at the residual analysis before quickly going over R squared, and then we can start with the fun. Residuals are the difference between the actual target values and the predicted values. Now we're looking for a normal distribution here, suggesting that the model is capturing the underlying relationships between the features and the target variables. So let's calculate these residuals by doing y test minus y predict, and then simply plotting that with Seaborn. And as you can see, it's quite normally distributed with that bell curve, which is good. Finally here, we'll take a look at some additional information, here being the R squared. This measures the proportion of variance in a target variable that's predicted from the features. It goes from zero to one. So what we've done here is got a new total bill value of 25. You can make this anything, it could be 30 or 40. What I will say is don't make it anything massively unrealistic because the further you look into the future, the less reliable the model will be, say if we put 9 million. Let's keep it here as 25. Let's have that as a new data point and used our trained model to predict for that value what the tip would be. Let's print it. Given the data it has seen and been trained and tested on, if you had a bill that totaled $25, you would give about $4 tip. But ultimately, here we've covered a variety of steps. We've gone from importing the libraries to loading the data, exploring, looking for correlations. We identified what we wanted to use for our features. We then inputted this as X and Y, divided it in the train test split. We created the linear regression model and trained it using this data. We then evaluated its model and covered a variety of factors such as mean squared error and otherwise. And then finally, once we'd looked at the residuals and so forth, we tested the model for particular values.